That's me, man. I'm the same here, brother. <laughs> Try to keep the mics about yay distance from your face. Somewhere in there. Just wherever. But uh, yeah, man. What do you say we knock into this thing? Sounds Looks, good. Sounds you good. guys ready sounds to go? Good. Let's go. All right. Let's, uh, everybody, welcome back to the Jameson on the Rocks podcast. Today I have with me two members of the regulars. Am I getting that right? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. Tell me you guys' names, occupations in the band, that sort of stuff. Tell me about you guys. Age I, as well. I'm Colin Cosby, 24. Nice. League ish guitar ish, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. How about you? Uh, I am Nick Cosby, his younger brother, okay. eighteen, and wow. the bass player. We got um, a youngin in here, man. Yeah. Are you in college yet or not? Yeah, I just started college. Cool. And going to UNG. Word, yeah. man. Night Nighthawks, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, I did that same route. That transfer in. Yep. I know what exactly. you're doing. I'm on to exactly. you. Exactly. Exactly. Well, yeah, I'm glad to have you guys out, man. I'm glad we can line this up last minute. I appreciate y'all coming out. Um, I've, I've heard a lot about you guys. I haven't actually seen you guys yet. I don't really know that much about you, which is kind of exciting because I uh, get to learn a little bit today. Yeah. Um, so just tell me how you guys got started. Tell me about uh, like your kind of origin story, I guess, how you got started playing your instruments, uh, how you started meeting people in bands, how, what brought you to Athens, that sort of stuff. Well, I will say I've always been really into music. I mean... We both right. have played music from a young age. Um, I've started learning guitar when I was like 11 years old. Ooh, it's pretty early, man. Um, it doesn't show. I kind of like once I got to college, it sort of took a back seat to just the college lifestyle and everything. And then mm -hmm. somewhere along the way, I got started getting super into jam bands, especially like Word. the dead and just watching yeah. Jerry videos. I was like, I got to yeah. get doing that again. Yeah. And um, so the other guys, it started the, the regular started out with me uh colby our singer and other lead guitar player and garrett our drummer we mm -hmm. all were fraternity brothers at georgia southern cool okay Statesboro. And, um, nice. yeah down in statesboro and we yeah. uh we were all really early just kind of getting into playing music with other people and we were all mm -hmm. about the same level of just you know low intermediate, stakes yeah, intermediate. exactly <laughs> just kind of hanging out having fun and figuring out how to do it with other people okay and um Colby and I, the name we we uh, used to go to this little music shop down there a lot, and just one day we walked in, and the clerk behind the counter goes, "It's our regulars." <laughs> and we look at each other like, "Is this a moment right now?" Like felt like it was in a movie or something. I was like, "That's a band name, like <laughs> Evil Origins yeah. Band." And uh, COVID happened, and we all just kind of came went our separate ways, okay. and then. Sometime this past spring, we all started hanging out and playing music again uh -huh. at Garrett's house out in Madison, where we can get real loud. He lives uh -huh. out in the country, so the same group of guys. Mm -hmm. So it started out again, just me, Colby, and Garrett, just hanging out and having fun. Word. And at some point along the way last year, you can take it away, Nick. But he just intro he yeah about uh, August of last year. Or so mm -hmm. he bought me a bass. Um, before that, all through middle school and high school, I was playing saxophone. I Word. Was, like alto? or I, I played alto initially, and then Word. I had played baritone saxophone for like nice. four years after that. And so I have that musical background, and he got me a bass, and I kind of just like learned it. And I wasn't like really like paying too much attention to it. It's kind of like <laughs> picking it. up every 15, like for 15 minutes a day or yeah. something like that. and. Good way Eventually, to start. Eventually, he was just like, yo, you want to play with us? And I was like, <laughs> sure, Fuck why not? Fuck yeah. Like, this one, I'm still just like sounding like shit. And then <laughs> it, it really took that nudge, though, because <sighs> as soon as I started playing with them, that's when I started like making like leaps and yeah. improvement and everything. He's like, oh, okay, so, I need to sound good, kind of. Yeah, I was like, it made me very self-aware. I feel like every quickly. bass player's story is like that. Like, hey, you want to play bass? <laughs> yeah. At least he wasn't just, the worst guitar player in the band and got forced into it <laughs> <laughs> but, i thought you sang a little bit though do you uh no not no? really I, okay. got pipes, I might i might huh? get a little drunky poo one night yeah? and bust out some blues one day we here need soon, it but. man <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's and then awesome somewhere along the way i think garrett met our keyboard player owen through oh, right. the jam ham group me yeah i'm in there I'm in he there. was posting something about needing people to play with and garrett had a country band before this as well okay. uh, called dixie highway dixie. and he got in with owen through that and mm -hmm. then 
was like, well, hey, we got this rock band, too, if you want to come hang out. <laughs> and Owen stayed. And then just the first time that we all played together, it was like magic. I mean, That's it was awesome. like we all were just like, you have to stay. I mean, yeah. like, you you, you you kind of get a choice, but also, you don't. I'm, yeah, like, we need you. <laughs> he and was definitely the best musician going into that. We okay. Like, that, that was, okay. That was pretty much the it. start of it all. Sometime around this June. June of yeah. this summer, we we met Owen and started playing together. Then and yeah, it all just worked out really fast after that. That's yeah. an awesome origin story. You guys got that down packed, man. Yeah, yeah, we probably played two weeks with each other before yeah. we had our first gig. And That's how you do it, man. Yeah, I love that. I mean, love that. Night before the first gig, we we timed, timed out ourselves. What do you mean, you timed yourself? Like, oh, just to see how much you had. Our material. We only uh-huh. had like. An hour thirty, hour. <laughs> they wanted yeah. us to play for two and a half hours Ooh, at Roadhouse. We were like, tough. we were like, yeah, we got that. No big deal. No sweat, right? Time out. How much we actually have? Yeah. With as long and pointless jams as we could make it, it was like an hour forty. <laughs> we Shit, were, man. So the night before our first gig, we learned fifty, almost sixty minutes worth of new songs, Damn. and it was, it was like, I mean, they were easy songs. It was yeah, like yeah. the weight and like, uh-huh. you know, Mary Jane's last, like it course, was like, okay, course. three chord. It James was like, who there. knows a song they could teach us right now? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to do it, man. I love that. I even sang for the first show, and I'm, yeah. I don't sing now. Anymore, yeah, like, you sang lead or just backgrounds and stuff. Sang lead, Bill Withers tune. <laughs> Let's go. Let's <laughs> go. The bass, and yeah. then I was like. Sure, gr- give me the mic. I'm I love that, man. Getting my James Brown. Like, well, that's awesome, dude. It seems like, I guess you guys would technically be considered like a COVID band kind of, right? Cause For it's like, sure. I mean, definitely, uh, I mean, there's definitely some downsides all that stuff, but a lot of great bands. It was like, hey, we got to fucking do something, you know, around June, July. She was like, fuck, I'm tired of sitting around. Let's start a band, you know? And on, on the other flip side of that, which is a little more unfortunate, it seems like a band, a lot of bands, even in Athens especially, called it quits. Yeah. But it made it a really good opportunity for bands like us. Oh, I mean. And I was sitting around talking with Colby one day, and I was uh-huh. like, dude, we should take this seriously. There's a lot yeah. of bands that are not coming back. There's a space that needs exactly. to be filled. It you was know, a like, huge space, man. And yeah. as it turns out, we can start up two weeks after first getting together, play <laughs> yeah. a gig, and now four months later, we're probably pushing 30. I know Let's we're over go, 25. Man. I don't know what how many gigs we played. That's a shit ton of gigs, bro. That's we good have, stuff. I mean, we we, we, we really dude. try to get as many under our belts as we can because yeah my attitude is i know there's a lot better musicians out there in Uh athens than i am and we are and i want to be competitive yeah i want to do trial by fire i want us to be as tight Mm -hmm. as good as we can and there's only one way to do that our our attitude is learn how to play to the crowd we're going to play our music our way but in our opinion it's better to play the music that we all want to play and play yeah. it really damn well uh-huh. so that the crowd that may be unfamiliar with it can get into it gotcha. than necessarily to play music we're not super into, not as passionate about, but maybe the crowd loves it, you know? That's a great mindset to have, man. You guys can't lose with that as long as you're doing what you want, man. And we definitely do try to keep a balance in there, too. Yeah. Like, I mean... Some classics. Of course. course. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, like... To, in my opinion, there's like a really fine line between, you know, like a classic cover and a cliche cover. You gotcha. Know? So it's like straddling that line has been kind of difficult. Yeah, yeah. And I think some of the times um, we end up with a little bit of magic in the moment, though, because uh-huh. we're really trying hard to make a song like Mary Jane's Last Dance, which every cover band ever plays. Totally. Our own, you know. Yeah, that's interesting. So, how, how, how much success have you had with that? Are you guys just like jamming on them longer or like... It's really just kind of... Like, a lot of times it is what it is, we, like, with a song like Mary Jane's, you know, we don't yeah. really fiddle with it too much until yeah. we kind of get to the last chorus. The harmonica and then we, And then it's just hitting it yeah. hard, you know what I mean? Just hitting yeah. it big, long, you know, Love that, stretch man. out for some solos, try yeah. to break it down a little bit, just get it to, like, the core of its being, you know, mm-hmm. and... Interesting. So would you guys consider yourself technically a jam band or any, like, other... What I, would your genre be, you know what I mean? I just say it's rock and roll. Yeah. Because... It definitely is leaning on that noodly jam band. Uh-huh. I mean, that's definitely vibe. a pillar and a vibe that we're going for. But also, uh-huh. I think a lot of the other bands in Athens that would maybe associate themselves with the jam scene are a little bit less um, hard-edged as we are. And we're not gotcha. super hard. The bands like Shameless James are way heavier than yeah. we are. Love those guys. Me too. We just saw them the other yeah. day at Roadhouse. They great did it show, Friday, by the way. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great How was show. it? Great, great show. Shout Highly recommend James. if you have not seen them out and you're listening to this. They gave me a sticker last time they were here. Shout out those guys. Nice guys, yeah. Hi. 
But there, you know, I do think we have a little bit more of like the mean, dirty rock and roll aspect to us than okay. some of the other Athens quote unquote jam bands. Yeah, when you say that, what do you mean? It's like distortion or like it's heavier not even distortion, songs? Or? It's just faster, faster, more okay. aggressive, meaner. I just love a that. little bit, a little bit of a snarl to In it. Your face. Nice. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's, that's a good thing to have. I'm. I'm kind of. We don't play any like ACDC, but that's the kind of <laughs> mindset I have is I yeah. want dirty, mean, and mighty yeah. unclean. AC, yeah, I like that. ACDC is a powerful band. We yeah. play a couple of songs by them. Very cool. Anyway, where was I going with that? Uh, I love to hear you talking about competition because, like, a lot, it seems like it's kind of like, I hate to say tacky, but nobody does it anymore out loud like you know kind of like in the 80s it was like oh we want to be the best band or whatever and now you don't hear too many people saying that but i'm all the time like bro like i'm trying to be the best band you get what i'm saying like i want to do this really well and like shout out to everybody else it is love a you guys you know it's what i mean it's a friendly yeah. competition yeah and yeah. i want you know in whatever way that our little band can help anyone uh, else out we would will love to yeah you know we will yeah. if we if we've had to pass on gigs we immediately call up friends of ours and say totally you know, Let's put you in touch with these guys because they might yeah. be able to help you out. Yeah. So in a way, I do see it as a competition, but also there's room for everybody. Yeah, it's not like a oh, I want him to lose competition. It's not it's a like, zero sum game. All want to, it's yeah. not a zero yeah, sum game. That's it's, a good way to put it. Very interesting. And dude, it was very nice and very wise of you guys to realize that there was a hole to fill at the end of COVID because God, it seemed like it was massive. Like huge bands that were just dominating town lost all their steam. Oh yeah, and it was a tough like political look for them to start playing too early and little bands that were just coming up we could start a little earlier you yeah know i'm I mean? like well i'm playing 30 people in a <laughs> tiny bar no yeah. one's heard of like yeah let's, <laughs> let's go. go yeah yeah that was a good era i really enjoyed that part of it it was like music's back you know that was really fun so yeah we definitely had a really good time just kind of like i think like you said like music is back like for us though yeah. we were just arriving you know so yeah. i think it was a great time to really, you know, put our best foot forward, mm -hmm. though, you know? I mean, people were itching for it. And yeah. so we got a little bit of goodwill and a little bit of extra slack that maybe we wouldn't have gotten if, you know, like you said, pre-COVID, it was really uh -huh. stiff, people competing for the same gigs, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. competing for the same attention from people in the in the scene, you know? Totally, totally. I think we got a lot of slack, though, just from being willing to, like, go out there and do it and, like, provide people with a good time. Yeah, totally, man. I think so. And when you guys start playing, where are you playing at? Is it any gigs or places in particular, if you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, a lot a lot of stuff at Roadhouse. Yeah, I noticed um, that. We uh, have been playing a little bit at Woodford. and Okay. We've done a bunch of, like, fraternity stuff. And through Fun that, gigs. we've gotten put on to some, like, private parties in Atlanta and stuff. But right nice. now, we're really just trying to break out a little bit. Find some new places to play. Yeah, because that was when I started noticing you guys. I hadn't really... I probably came became aware of you guys around, like, August or July-ish. When I was like, I was like, who are these motherfuckers playing Roadhouse every Friday? Like, these yeah. guys are playing. And that's kind of my personal, like, uh, I hate to say, like, like success ratio. But, like, the, the people that I see playing the most, I'm like, okay, I respect these guys. They're killing it. Good for them, you know? And that was when I was like, oh, these guys are playing just about every Friday somewhere. I was like, okay, better watch out. That's what the, the, the impression that I want to give people that might yeah. see the name too is mm. is I don't want people to – not that there's anything wrong with this because this is, is how we started and this mm. is how we would still be if we were in Statesboro. But I don't want people to think that we're just – a bunch of frat boys just playing yeah. for our friends and stuff. Like we're pretty serious about it. You yeah, know? you're we, trying we, to do we it. We really want to be our our best and and be the best that we can be as musicians. You know, I mean, yeah, we are doing it to. I guess I wouldn't say make a name, but you know, mm -hmm. we want to give it the old honest college try. Yeah, but also, yeah. I think at the core, everybody's on the same page in the band about really why we're doing this is because. We had kind of plateaued as musicians a little bit and needed okay. a kick. And so this is kind of the best. I mean, what, yeah. what, at, at some point, you got to leave the bedroom. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That you yeah, you got to get really out easy. there and put yourself out there and maybe eat it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> very maybe. <laughs> but you spend like the first literally like 10,000 hours just playing your bedroom. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, and then yeah. fuck, finally you're playing in front of people. It's like, man, I don't do this every night, you know? <laughs> and that's what that, really makes you like a better musician as yeah. well is like rather than practicing and everything you're honing mm. in on skills then but when you're really putting it to the test and like yeah trial by fire like he said i mean that's yeah. how you really get better and like that's, that's funny why you say we that. love 
playing so much is like we want to play every week if we could. We want to yeah. do three gig weekends, like, <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. Like my fingers are literally. <laughs> I got blood, I show the camera. Look at that. <laughs> Damn, brother. So hard. Fuck. I'm just like I love it. Are you? Uh, I need it. You left handed? No. No. Right okay. Okay. Sorry. I, I thought mean, it was the other hand. I just play way too hard. <laughs> That's a good problem. Good problem. Talk to is just like you play way too hard, man. You need to like, <laughs> chill. Dial it back. Yeah. It's funny you guys say that because like I remember vividly like before I'd play any gigs, I would like play stuff in my room and it felt like flawless, you know. And I'd watch like tapes of like bands. I'd be like, damn, how'd they fuck that up? And then we started playing live. I was like, oh, okay, I, I see now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's oh, very yeah. easy to we do. We just got back some recording. Like, we yeah. had our most recent Roadhouse show recorded. Um, How'd you guys do that? At, off the board? or? So, shout out to Ben Myers. I don't okay. know if you know Ben I Myers. Not, uh, he plays in a band. I think it might be a temporary band name called The Beaking Husks. The Beaking with Husks. Patrick McGuire, Ian Thomas from Bird Dog Jubilee. I know Ian Thomas. I um, love him. And I am blanking on the keyboards player's name. I'm so <laughs> sorry if you're if you're hearing this, but he, he brought out sad. all of his mics for sad. us. Yeah, mic'd us up, had us running through his mixer, uh, big fancy, beautiful sound, and yeah. recorded it all for us straight into the mixer and mixed it up for us and got it back to us a few days later. And we were just, we've just been listening to it and. Uh -huh. honestly i mean it was kind of a surprise we were all pretty excited and shocked at how good it sounded because yeah. i think we all have a tendency to be pretty hard on ourselves uh -huh. um but there <laughs> so were also there were some clear moments sometimes it's the moments that you think you did really badly on that mm -hmm. it actually turns out to be pretty good and the moments that you think you did pretty good on gotcha when you listen back to it it's you're like, like okay that could have been a lot better you yeah. know like okay i'm really not doing my best at this moment you very know? revealing being lazy maybe even yeah. you know what i mean gotcha and he did he be multi tracks back or yeah I think so um, <clears throat> or was it just a mix either way it's fine I was just curious I think it was just a mix but he uh, has it all multi tracks separately mm -hmm. that's awesome see dude just getting that stuff back and just listening to a whole gig is like like very exposing you know it's like oh wow you know what I mean because like yeah. it's easy when it's loud as fuck in a small bar to be like we are just perfect you know, like our sound <laughs> is killing it right now yeah and you listen all, back and something sounds emotions. thin and you're singing off key and you're out of time it's like fuck man i gotta work on some stuff well i will say too like early on after one of our first gigs we decided to record one of our practices at nucci space they mm -hmm. offer that service i didn't know that that's awesome and we listened back to it and we were absolutely distraught we were like this is <laughs> we were like this we were like this is what we sound like right now like <laughs> i mean it was nothing short of embarrassing we yeah. played four or five gigs and we're yeah. like is this what we've been playing like like <laughs> i mean in front of people some of them have been like full saturday night crowd you yeah. know what i mean we're like oh my god yeah gotta rework it <laughs> it was it was it was it was it was i don't want to say like a make or break moment but it uh -huh. was one of those moments where it was like okay well we can either roll over and yeah define what kind of band we want to be is like this is acceptable we're still getting paid a couple hundred yeah. bucks we get a free bar tab is it really that important if we're doing our best uh -huh. and every single person was like fuck that <laughs> Hell like, no, yeah. you know what i mean yeah. we, we all want to play at 110 percent every time that's awesome you man. Know? yeah that stuff's so revealing it's good to hear you talk like that because uh just getting a short shows recorded in general is a wise move and uh, even videos. You guys ever dig back at some videos? Oh, yeah. Whole we'll show videos can help a lot. It's like, whoa, I'm, I'm standing still a lot. Or, whoa, I'm not looking at the crowd. You know what I mean? Like, it just exactly. it shows you stuff, you know? It's the nuances of it all. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, some of us show, like, the most stage presence out of, like, ever. And then some of us are just, like, very still. Like, yeah, it's stone. easy to be still. Yeah. Some of us, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, I might be talking a little bit of shit about him, but... Um, it's him. only because he's my brother. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. You got a stage presence issue? You working on it? I have gotten better the last yeah. few times we've played, but For it sure. probably took twenty shows before <laughs> I started moving around a little bit. <laughs> Love it, man. Well, that's I mean, how you, that's growth though, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's how just, you do it. I mean you know, I remember that first time that I cracked a smile at the end of the show. Somebody's <laughs> like, hey, did you guys notice? Like, he smiled tonight. <laughs> they did like, it, bro. <laughs> usually I'm just up there mean mugging, oh trying to just focus gosh. on not hitting wrong notes. That's like, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he smiled. That's so funny. That's awesome, dude. I love to hear that y'all are playing a lot. That's just like everything you're saying. It's just like, that's the best thing you can do is play a lot. You know what I mean? Like in front of people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's just the best in every way.
And I kind of got that a little bit of that inspiration from like a lot of the old blues guys who would yeah. say, you know, they do three three sets a night. You yeah, know residency I mean? stuff. And um, you know, they're always talking about, well, you're gonna run out of licks. You're gonna run out of licks. You mm-hmm. don't need to play at 110 percent all the time because you're gonna run out of licks. Totally. You know, they always and it's it's almost like, you know, their advice is pretty specific to guitar players. Take you know three, four, five notes and just yeah. kind of put parameters around yourself. But I I heard that and internalized it, and you know, the idea, especially about playing music, not just for myself, but like putting parameters around your band, putting parameters mm-hmm. around yourself for a night, for one gig, you know, and yeah. you can, instead of like having the world of wide open possibilities where, mm-hmm. yeah, things can go really right, but you also have the opportunity if you're going out there in space to go really wrong, uh-huh. you know, I, I feel like we've gotten good results by like putting parameters around a show a little bit and being like, Okay, well, this is a short set. We're only going to play for about an hour 15. Like, yeah. let's keep it pretty funky. Let's keep it pretty upbeat, okay. pretty dancey. Okay. You know what I mean? So, like, like well, genre parameters or? Not just that. It's it's also, like, playing-wise and just. Okay. But especially, like, I, I try not to think too much in terms of genre and more so in terms of, like, the energy. Gotcha. You know, because there's a f- not a super wide variety of genres we play, but yeah. I mean, it's all, it's, there's a pretty wide representation is it of like blues, rock? funk. It's okay. all rock. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. a lot of it is, you know, soul and funky That's and awesome. rocky and yeah. bluesy. And like, it does have a little bit of, a little, little bit of variety to it. But yeah, I like to kind of try and try and get good results out of, out of putting a, a limitation or two on yourself for the night. You know, when you say energy, w- what exactly do you mean? Are you just talking about like, set list flow to where mm-hmm. people are getting more hype towards exactly. the end kind of stuff that's yeah. I, I'm, important i'm very very perhaps uh, too too conscious of yeah. uh how how we stack our set lists and I, I like to start out with a little bit of like a very like you know stringent set list for the first five or six songs and then kind like of order wise crowd order yeah, wise yeah, okay, exactly gotcha, gotcha gotcha but it's really important to me to win them over early yeah, you know? yeah. so we'll a lot of times we'll start with you know, like a pretty heavy, hard song with big drums, lots of toms, yeah. you know, just, one, yeah, you know, just lots of energy, you know, and then yeah. break it down, get a little funky, but it's gotta, it's gotta be high tempo. It's gotta be high energy, no matter Love what that, genre man. it is, it's Love gotta that. be driving, you know, at first. And That's then great. we'll pull back a little, let them get yeah. a breather, let them go get a drink, you know. It's awesome, man. But, You're talking like me. I take, I'm, I'm another one of those guys that takes the set list thing like super serious. Personally, it's like. You could feel the energy flow. It's like, oh, we don't need that right now. And a lot of times I'm looking at our set list and looking at the next song like, no, nah, that's not what we need right now. That's you know exactly what, I mean? what we do. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we'll make like a rough set list or something or a yeah. sketch of, okay, these are the songs that we can yeah. choose from, all this stuff. And then we're like, okay, what, what fits the mood right now? So yeah. sometimes like the set list, it'll... Definitely not read the room, but mm-hmm. as soon as how could it? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't predict the future yeah. with that type of stuff. And if you play something wrong, you'll you could lose thirty people in the crowd or whatever. <laughs> yeah, for real, man, they're I mean, they're unforgiving. We've I watched mean, yeah. it happen halfway Same. through a set when we, without thinking about it, organized maybe two or three slow songs in a row. Yeah. And we watched half the room yeah. empty out, and we just doubled down <laughs> and committed because what are you yeah. going to do at that point? Yeah. But then we learned our lesson quick. Yeah. We, were, we were like, okay, maybe don't give them 30 minutes of <laughs> balance. Like, <laughs> oh, shit. That was show oh, number two. Okay, yeah. guys. <laughs> lesson learned yeah. well that dude that's fucking you're saying all kind of stuff that i'm experiencing too because like uh my band um what was i gonna say about that we we we, we played a show at paloma park and it was like an all cover show and then we played warehouse which is like a all original show and like a bunch of people from paloma came to see us yeah i was like all right we gotta win them early so you, you gotta slide in a really good cover like second or third you know and I saw him looking real rather bored until that third song. I was like, all right, we got him. We got him. And then we hooked him in and kind of evened it out, you know. But stuff like that, dude, is so important to me. Like, I, I we stopped making set lists uh, for cover shows, like three-hour shows, just because I was like, I know I'm not going to follow it. Like, I'm going to look out, and I'm going to know what we need to play energy-wise. Like, all right, we just gave him two bangers. We can slow it down right here for a yeah. song or two. You know what I mean? So that's really smart that you guys are doing that, man. I don't think everybody does that, so that's good. I think a lot of uh, some of our other friends in bands have told us they actually stick to a set list every like, night. 
No, I mean it's not the yeah. same. It changes yeah. up, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, they they good make a set, they make a set list, and it's good for them to know like before they play how yeah. the flow of the show is intended to go. Exactly. You know, and I can see uh, certain arguments for that, like totally security and like knowing where you're gonna go and how the mm-hmm. especially if you're like jamming like long on one song and you know, okay, well. We're here, and I see a path forward to get to the next song through this next song through this yeah. jam. You know, I, it can help cool. knowing what you're going to go yes. into as a group. You know, whereas yes. like a lot of times us, we have a couple of songs that like are all in the same key, sort of similar tempo, and and within a jam, you got a pretty good idea. It's going to be one of maybe three or four things, but you really got to be on your toes and listening to who introduces it first introduces yeah. like the melody or like it, like how yeah, it could you, be a rhythm like, like it depends it on what then... it is like if it's like like if we're going into red hot mama like yeah. it's definitely gonna be that just working into the rhythm uh-huh. of just dun, 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 uh-huh. you know before you necessarily actually you hear the riff you know it's like we're trying to working on changing the rhythm a little bit to get into that but then say uh, what's another? What's another one, Nick? We do shakedown street. Ride shakedown me high. street is one that where it's absolutely the melody gets introduced, like, and yeah. people like at least for our band, like that's one of those ones people knows coming. Yeah, yeah. If we're in D, people know that at some point it's going to be either ride me high, <laughs> shakedown street, uh-huh. red hot. Mo- like it's there's a few options for us as yeah. far as jams and go. And then occasionally sprinkle in that superstition. Yeah, going into drop D. <laughs> So fun. That is fun, man. That's cool that you guys blend them together right that. I'd say one of the big pros to having the set list is like transitions, kind of like you're saying, mm-hmm. like a lot less dead space of me looking at my bass player and going, what's next? You know Ooh, what I mean? That's What's bad, that, right? yeah, it, yeah. that three or four seconds feels like forever. Yeah, it does. It gets real <laughs> quiet in there, man. Oh, it, man. And they'll murder you with the request sometimes. Like fucking, you know, I don't know, insert any song, but they're just using them out. American Pie, Bob yeah. O'Reilly. Yeah, we, yeah. We, were, we were playing at Roadhouse, I guess about a month ago, and it was like a parents weekend for yeah. some something. There are a lot of parents in there. Some Some, something. some dad. Hands us a hundred dollar bill and he Woo! says, "Y'all just play some old." And we we're like, <laughs> <laughs> "Done." <laughs> yeah, this is the, the easiest hundred dollars we've ever made. Like, <laughs> gotcha. that's awesome, man. Fucking, you can't beat those tips like that yeah, sometimes, man. It's like, we, yeah, you request something general like that for us. Like, we'll we'll try yeah. your, we'll try our best. Yeah. And then we I, had I, somebody request um we 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 did another parents weekend thing for yeah. um for KD and we had a, one of their moms request american pie uh-huh. and we were all just like well they're paying us a lot of money yeah. today so i don't want to say no so uh-huh. colby you got this one right i'm just gonna <laughs> step off stage get a beer like <laughs> you got it yeah <laughs> left just, him yeah i didn't even play <laughs> I, like half the band walked off and this just guy kinda... he pulls, it, he pulls up the chords and the lyrics on his phone and pulls it out of his yeah. butt just in it the went moment all right. <laughs> it went all right See, it's such a, happy it's it. a tough needle to thread because it's like fuck. Like I would like, especially when you get a good request. It's like, all right, that's a fucking good song. We just don't know it, you know. Yeah. And they expect you to fucking know everything, like you're a damn, uh, like you're the radio. You know what I mean? Which is tough sometimes. Like- yeah, it's like fuck. We could try it, but I don't think it'll be very good. You know. We so got I don't know. Similar to that. We've uh, we uh, we've started getting a little bit of traction with like the uh, the really hardcore like widespread panic fans ooh, in Athens. Nice, yeah. You guys do have the whole like jam culture thing going on, um, right? Yeah, oh, we do yeah. play a lot of panic too. But we've a lot of the, like real hardcore panic heads have started mm-hmm. to like cue in and come out, and it's always like. I want to indulge their request, but sometimes they hit us with like a real deep cut, yeah. and I'm just like, like man, uh, like I yeah, love that, that song. I don't even know where I'd begin on like. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, man. I mean, it's fun, especially when you get a request for one you already know. It's like, yes, you know what I mean. It's like, all right, we got, got you. you, we got you, don't man. Worry. We were playing, um, we were playing Borset. You guys ever do Borset? We haven't done it yet. We'd love Ooh. to get in there. Here, at some it's like point, a though. perfect place Borset. for like jams. And yeah, stuff like yeah. That. There's such a. It's an accepted crowd to music of any sort which is which i love you guys know what board sets like but like yeah, uh, i've been to some of the open mics and stuff before, yeah the open so. mics are fun that's kind of where we started but board sets literally my favorite place to play we just got off tour and i still love board set the most because like just no matter what there will be a crowd there that's down to hear music that's why when i saw the roadhouse thing like start to start happening in like i don't know july i was kind of wondering what the difference was like why people were going over there Supposed to bore said, yeah, that's a that's a hundred percent the underground springhouse guys. Think so? It was because uh, it was like this past spring they had they were playing under a pseudonym there every week uh, doing cover sets. 
They're playing they, their what? Under a pseudonym. I believe they were playing under Jackie Big Hoss. But I was, remember that. It was yeah. all them. Yeah. They were just playing all covers. Yeah. And they did that from like March through the summertime. And okay. it just got people like primed and ready every week, every Thursday night. Let's yeah. go to Roadhouse. Let's see a jam band. Let's go. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, because I the, never even heard of it. Like the Roadhouse, like I've been here in Athens for four years. I don't think I ever noticed it until yeah. they started doing it. And like Charlie Haas trio stuff mm-hmm. as well. I was mm-hmm. like, okay. Yeah, apparently like har- hardly anybody who goes to Georgia knows about Roadhouse. But then yeah. they're like, where's Roadhouse? And you're like, right beside Little, Little Italy. Italy. Yeah. And then they're like, Oh, <laughs> light bulb goes off. You in walk the head. past it a million times. Exactly. You know? They do have a really good built-in crowd there, though. I mean, they're yeah. like, I mean, even if literally no students are there, you're going to have thirty or forty locals oh, there, and they're usually pretty nice folks. There's some really good people that go there on the regular, but it's nice because it seems like after the last year of bands coming through and really grinding it out uh-huh. there, I mean, it's kind of. It's carved out its own little space in the music scene mm-hmm. for like jammy music, you yeah. know. Now, now the fans of that that are the students know about Roadhouse. They go. It's in sort of a if you know, you know kind of thing, which I yeah. like. I think that's cool. I think that's cool too. Yeah, it feels like you're yeah. in on something almost. You know. Yeah, it's very cool because like especially since like I've been in Athens for four years and like haven't heard a peep about it until this past year. Like and now it's like every weekend to you guys or Fun Room or uh, James James or somebody. Shout out you know? Peach Street Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Street, heard man. of them. It's like somebody every every weekend in the Athens Jam Ham is like, hey, Roadhouse Friday. Mm-hmm. And I haven't made it to many yet, but I think it's very cool. It's a nice little culture that's going on, which is kind of the whole point of the jam thing anyways, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's a family. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're it's very all cool. there to bring each other up and support. So, like, And the playing's cool. Like, uh, exactly. Uh, like, yeah, like, I'm, like before Athens, before I came to Athens, I wasn't really into the jam thing. And I'm still not like – like balls deep in or anything, but I'm a fan now. You know what I mean? I admire it. I admire the whole like not knowing where this song's gonna go thing. It's like Plus, yeah. very as cool. a guitar player, you just have to admire because there's yeah. some serious bad motherfuckers yeah, in man. this town. Uh huh. I mean, gunslingers. Serious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's like a different sector of that. It's like you don't just see like uh, I'm trying to think of a good example, but like I don't know, just like three hour popular cover band like. That's just playing hits, you know. You just don't see them going to Roadhouse. But you guys, like Jammy, it's like only Jammy, which is cool. Is that purposeful, you think? Or is that just... Uh, I think it's sort of a consequence of, like I said earlier this year, like Ush was doing their thing there. Mm -hmm. And then I've known those guys for years. And it kind of made me want to do it too. I was like, well, if they're they're going to play Roadhouse, like we could probably do it too. Yeah. And then our friend that was bartending there at the time just happened to hit us up and was like, hey, do you guys want to play? We were like, hell yeah. Yeah. And it just sort of went from there. We made friends with the owner, Jasmine, or she's the manager. Okay. But cool lady, also nice. loves the jam music. Everybody there is like into Panic, into Fish, <laughs> you know, Umphrey's <laughs> McGee, like stuff like that. So like Little we got on stage and like ripped a Panic cover and they mm. were like, Oh hell yeah! Like okay, like let's go. You know, come back the next week. Yeah, come that on. night they were like, "So, do you guys want to play like six more times through the rest of the summer?" And we were just like, yes. "Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll work around it." Like, <laughs> That's awesome, man. Did you get any of that? I don't really. I believe there's not much of a jam scene in Statesboro, though. Is there? What was it like up there, music there's, wise? There's not. There's. There, I mean, there there is like a music scene. Yeah. Um, like a little bit. You know, there's a lot of open mics, which uh-huh. is like kind of where we got our start playing on stages open mics at the pizza place that i worked at work <laughs> <laughs> i'd get off work walk out the kitchen and uh-huh. then my, you know colby would have my guitar waiting on me that's sick man um, that's awesome but uh there, there's not a, not a not a big music scene there is a cool bar down there called the blue room which you guys room. should check out if yeah, you haven't I, played there i'm talking to the guy you should, you should. <laughs> yeah. it's a cool spot yeah i got a i got a phone call with my man on monday we're working on that destroy that, that yeah. place thank you man i appreciate um, that I th- it's a cool place man it's sick it's it's big they yeah. have legit sounding yeah. lights they have built-in crowd yeah a yeah. huge built-in crowd yeah. every side every every night that place is packed love that and man. i mean with you guys and like uh. the the throwback rock and just like the, uh-huh. the, the classics and the super like popular stuff you guys will destroy there thank you man but I yeah think you're right. a lot a lot of a lot of jam bands don't really come through underground spring house yeah, has they a do few blue times room, right? aftm if you want to call them they're kind of jammy they kind of are, yeah. They're on the on the outskirts, um, yeah. I would say. But we they, talked they, about them in the last episode. They're kind of tough to pin down to a Yeah, we saw them. Well, Silver. Yeah, were there. Yeah, that yeah. was a really killer That show. was cool, dude. I enjoyed the that shit out of that. War Pigs was... War Pigs was cool. You know, I didn't expect that one. Didn't oh, expect yeah. that one. Oh, yeah. 
Very no, cool, we were talking man. to Cutter too after that, and he said that they played that in New York like on a whim <laughs> earlier this year, and that like fights were breaking out on like on the floor, <laughs> and I was just like, let's go. I love Cutter, like, man. <laughs> yeah. I really love. I said this in the last episode. I Granville, who I'm sure you guys know, nice Actually, fellas. Actually, I haven't met those guys or yeah. seen their band yet, but I've heard nothing but good things. They're so yeah. sick, man. So sick. They got the whole like kind of country rock thing going on. Very cool. Um, they AFTM like really structures their songs well instrumentally. If you notice, I'm sure you guys oh, yeah. notice like the breakdowns and the choruses have like an instrumental thing going on. They have really a, a cool. really nice like tension and release to yeah it dude they're smart masterful i would say they're I mean, smart songwriters dude out of, out of anybody in the last like several years that i'm aware of that's come out of athens they might be the best ones i think they are man they're they're my personal favorite and, I, and i'm just a fan of all the guys because i know them all so well and they're all just doing their thing you know it's super talented every single fucking one of them man exactly so talented totally agree everybody in silver they were singing them songs back mm -hmm. man they yeah, know it's cool I, I looked into the crowd cool. and i yeah. saw everybody mouthing yes words. bro I was like, hell yeah even to like i mean and i think they only have like six singles so like they played for two and a half hours most like well, how many covers they play three yeah they, they yeah they probably played like three covers and all badass, of that was like man. new stuff as yeah. well for like their new album apparently and, and it wasn't like think of, there's not many bars you can get away with or not many artists that can get away with that in like a bar circuit you get what i'm saying yeah. like if we if we try to do three hours of original music we get murdered up there you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we get burned out of there but they, they just did it really well empty. But yeah, how are you guys coming along on the originals? You guys got any in the works? We actually just played our first one that is quote unquote completed, aka good enough to perform. <laughs> um, yep. We when 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 did we play that for the first time at Roadhouse last week? Yeah. And then we played it again. We played like a uh, private like birthday party for uh, it was actually Cutter's girlfriend's twenty first oh, birthday. Oh, she's but so nice. I love Meg, her. Meg uh, is really good friends with Owen's girlfriend. Gotcha. And uh, has been to like probably all of our shows so <laughs> she asked us to play and we were like of Fuck course yeah, like, yeah. yeah and it, it's gotten a good response so far honestly like we've tried to really at the beginning and the end be like that was our song <laughs> it has it has a really similar kind of vibe to like the music that we like to play so yeah. i don't necessarily know if people realize that's it blends in really well it is what blends you're well oh, that's yeah. a good problem though man if it's holding up to these other songs that's yeah. great i mean it's um it's it's cool. I think I think it'll probably continue to go through some changes. Like mm -hmm. it's uh, Owen originally had the idea for it, and I think it was meant as more of like a uh, so to have a little bit more swing, almost like a salsa sort of like rhythm a New to Orleans it. blues kind okay. of. Thing. And okay. it's John kind of style. turned into a much more like driving <laughs> rock and song. Yeah, which I'm sure you know we'll probably try to take the approach like many other you know jam bands before mm -hmm. us, and I'm sure there will be fast versions, slow versions, yeah, salsa versions. Yeah, that is a jam you know thing, I mean? right? Just yeah. Kinda, Whatever you're feeling that night, however the, song, yeah, however the song starts off, will probably set the tone for the night. You know, that's very cool. Interesting, it, and it's it's a simple enough song that you know there's a lot of room to play around with. You yeah. know, stylistic changes and you know stuff like that. It's three chords, <laughs> and it just kind of. Does this thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's interesting, man. Well, I'm stoked to hear this. You guys got a, like, a record release plan on or anything like that? Or is it just like get some songs together first? I would really like to. We've got a few more ideas that are brewing and nothing that's quite as finished as this. Um, mm -hmm. So I would, I've been saying that I'd like to, to try and get three or four things together and maybe try and get some studio time before the end of the year. I don't yeah. know if that's going to happen because uh -huh. I'd really like to try these songs out live before yeah. we record them but we do have this really shockingly high quality recording from roadhouse and i, be, <laughs> I keep telling the guys we need to just find uh -huh. four or five cuts off of it that are good and just, live record yeah, baby just put exactly. it out not even as like a live record like the whole thing but you mm. know just find some cuts and have something out there that we can link to something that yeah that's you know, huge. we can push you yeah know? dude i think that'd be really cool for you guys to start with the live that kind of set live the statement the you know? yeah oh yeah because everybody wants their first production like you know they want their first one like all gassed up you know and record yeah, it perfect I, but if you guys change this the stigma you know that'd be I, sick i don't know we haven't really talked a lot about it it's yeah. more my i feel not pressure but i i want something to put out there to push you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. something like, to work I, I i want people to know that like we're not just a cover band you know yeah. what i mean totally i know exactly um, what you're talking about yeah and there's nothing wrong with that but i want to be playing original music like the first yeah. time that we played the song live at roadhouse last thursday night 
I mean, the feeling of it was just like, I mean, it was weird. Yeah. You know, it's I mean, different. I was like, I was like, our, this our is song. our song. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I just don't think I can go back now the same way that like the first 20 minutes of playing on stage at Roadhouse the first time for our mm-hmm. first gig ever, all of our first, first gigs ever, yeah. not just like paying gig or whatever, like. Just the, only, first time. the only thing we played was open mics before that. You know what really? I mean? Our first gig ever. All That's five awesome. of us. Within, by the end of the first night, I think we were all just like, yeah, I don't think we can ever go back now. Like, we have to be doing this. I don't care <laughs> what level it is. I, I love that. You know, yeah. I mean. It's an addiction. And like, then another yeah. thing that, that happened a couple months ago is a few of us, Nick came, Owen went with us as well. We saw um, legendary Athens band Bloodkin at Blood Nowhere Kin. Bar. I've heard of them. I've heard of them. I don't know anything about them, but I've heard of them. They were kind of coming up at the same time as Panic. In okay. fact, a lot of Panic songs that the fans love are actually written by Bloodkin. So kind of 90s-ish? Or 80s, mid- 90s for 80s, sure. 90s, they okay. are uh, legends of this local scene. They've done it all from yeah. playing, opening for Panic and other bands. But here they are. 30, 40 years later, you know, yeah. and they're still playing at Nowhere Bar. They're yeah. still doing the damn thing. And it's like, yeah. I don't care if I've dedicated, if, you know what I mean? Like, I just felt like it was, it was like, I was like, I've got to be doing that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I could, it was like looking into Calling. like a mirror arm almost, uh-huh. not, but not a mirror, just kind of like the future sort of. Yeah, dude. It That's was like, I don't care if I'm playing to 10 people at yeah. a pizza shop. Like, yeah. I feel at this point. Like I have caught the bug, you know. Yeah, what I mean? you're hooked. Yeah, yep. And it's incredibly addictive, like you said. Oh yeah, incredibly oh. We, those, addictive. Those weekends where we do like four, like two two a days, yeah. like we'll rip through four gigs on a Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Man, the week after that is just depressing. <laughs> it really is. I mean, man. it's just like we're just all like, "What's going on? Like, yeah. why am I? Why am I sad? Like, <laughs> those, dude, <laughs> those in between weeks are like They're definitely the worst. The worst. And yeah. we. We had like probably three weeks where we didn't play a gig or anything, yeah. and it, uh, as soon as we got back, I just felt like I was myself a again. Wash. I, yeah, it, it just it flushed over me. I was just like, it's yep. it's it's dangerously addictive, bro. Because like 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 you're saying, dude. Like I'm we're on like a three week break now. We did literally from August to now every weekend, almost three shows a weekend. Yeah, that flyer and, I saw was fat. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. We worked hard on it. It was fun, man. And then it was like, now it's like these weeks, even this past week, and I was literally like, why am I a lot? Like, it was like an anxious feeling. Like, what am I doing? You know, like, if we're something not playing. Off. Yeah, like, it's weird because you get used to, like, just, like, having something to think about all week. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, what are we playing on Friday? Oh, where are we playing on Friday? That kind of stuff. It's kind of kind of fucking scary, man, we, a little we, bit. Yeah, we, we, uh, we obviously hit Roadhouse pretty hard and pretty yeah. frequently. So when we have times like that, we try to really – Learn write some new songs, yeah, write some songs, yeah. you know, be productive, and, 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 and come in with it with a little bit something new. Because yeah. I felt really bad for him the first several times that we played there, because we pretty much like learned a set list worth of material, uh-huh. and then did not have time to really we could improve upon it, but it was really hard to add to it. So for the first like. Yeah, Probably yeah, eight time. or nine times we played Roadhouse, it was like different orders of the same. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with it, but I think it's a personal thing, like a personal yeah. hunger that you want with the music. Like you want to, I mean, yes. a lot of the time you go to those bars and everything, you will have a lot of new people seeing you, and it's their first time seeing you, but some of those people, they've seen you a couple times, and mm-hmm. then it's like, if you want to... I don't know. Yeah. Get something refreshing going, mm-hmm. and I know what you're even for about. us, like even for us playing different songs, new songs is so refreshing, and we're just like we learn so much as musicians as well, learning new songs. Like yeah. you just learn new licks, you learn everything. So like, so it's also, and it's also really rewarding when you go to learn a new song and you consciously are trying to up the difficulty a little. Yeah, yeah. And then when you finally play it and you nail it, that's a good feeling. Mm-hmm. Like. The other day we played uh, "Trampled Underfoot" the Zeppelin song, it was yeah, like our yeah, first Zeppelin cover. Yeah, but like right. when we nailed it, I was like, "We just fucking covered <laughs> Zeppelin and let's go and killed it!" Like I was like, "What a far cry from like you yeah. know the three and four chord yeah. like Tom Petty jams, which MG. I love." Me too. But it's like you know progress. Yes, exactly. It's like playing a little more complex music, getting a little bit better yeah. at it. It's like it and makes the simpler stuff better. Totally. But also it's like it's the feeling of accomplishment. Uh-huh. You know. I love that, man. It's a really well put. Uh it's and it gives you something to look forward to in the set cuz like w- when you're playing three shows a weekend like you're saying, like you just don't have time to learn a new four new covers by the next weekend. 
And it's like, man, if you just have one to hold on to, it's like, all right, I know this fun one's coming up. One we have really it, good. That we yep. haven't done yet, you know, which mm-hmm. is great, man. And it, it is easy for – it's tough, though, when you're when some of your favorite songs start getting stale, you know? Mm-hmm. Like songs – like, you know, you're just playing them every night. It's like, okay, this is one of my favorite Five songs. The Crowd Night Rider one more time. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, Fuck, I love that song. I love that song forever, but I don't want to play it again right now, you know? And then people get to knowing you for it, and they request it every time because they know you like it. It's like, fuck, it's just like a loophole. Somebody, we were playing the other day, and we were like in a jam, and somebody, mm-hmm. I heard them, start to hit that, like they were soloing, <laughs> and they were working that lick into the tail end of their solo. Yeah. And I look up at Owen, our keys player, and he's literally rolling his eyes. He's like, <laughs> he's like, no, he's like not, not this again. again. Shit, man. Well, that's that's hilarious, dude. And honestly, the best way to look at the covers, everybody has to do them, and like they're fun, and it's like research and development for the originals. Absolutely, like, everything that went to you guys original, I'm sure you pulled it from another cover. You know what 100%. I mean? Yeah. Owen yeah. was even like, so Owen was the person who wrote the song, and he uh-huh. was, he found like the way to play the song by uh-huh. learning one of the songs that we were gonna learn. We were gonna learn this song by Marcus King called uh-huh. "One Day She's Here," and he messed up the song, uh, like playing through it whenever he was learning it, and he was uh-huh. like, "Wait, this actually sounds kind of cool." Yeah, and then wrote some lyrics, and then we're on our Bob Ross shit full of happy <laughs> accidents. <laughs> yeah. I love it, love exactly. it, man. There's a whole book about that. I don't know if you guys have read it. It's like a uh... Stealing on purpose is about music. You ever read it? Or like, I or it's like borrowing on purpose, hmm. some shit like that. About how like all music is like you can use other songs to influence yours. You know what I'm well, saying? I mean, yeah, without stealing. Notes, so yeah, you know like saying? everything's like, taken a little bit. You know, so that's interesting, man. I would love to. I would love to see you guys. Uh, you guys are gonna work up a few songs and put out an EP or something eventually, right? Hopefully. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Doubt. I mean, like I said, I'd, re- I'd really. I don't know if it's gonna happen by the end of the year, any studio time, but I think mm-hmm. by this spring, I think. Um, Probably by April. I don't want to put a timeline on it yeah. officially because obviously we haven't even really finished writing songs mm-hmm. and doing all that thing. But I think it's totally conceivable that by, you know, quarter one of yeah. the spring, you know, <laughs> segment twelve, Q one. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we ought to have you know at least a handful enough yeah, for an EP. Dude. That's what I think. What we want to do is either that or kind of the AFTM approach of huh. have it all done and then you know sort of slow Play drip. It. Yeah, slow drip like you know singles. singles. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I think either you couldn't go wrong with either way, man. Couldn't go wrong with either way. That's interesting. I'd, I'd love to hear that from you guys. Have you guys played any bigger bigger places like 40 Watt or anything like that? Actually, we, we might have a 40 Watt gig Ooh, lined up. Is it a big secret? I don't know if yeah. it's 100% happening yeah. so yet, maybe. but we've been yeah. approached about it. Yeah. And Who we, is? We were, uh, Bird Dog Jubilee and Big Chungus. Oh, I love Big Chungus, <laughs> bro. Fuck, man. Yeah. You guys are playing with the Chung? Do you know when? Chungus. It's uh, December 7th. I'm not sure if it's 100% on the books yeah. yet, but if it is, we'll be there. <laughs> I, love, I love Big Chungus. That would be a good fit for you guys. You guys have seen them, right? Yeah. Andy? They're yeah. sick. They're sick. I was at the last one at the 40 Watt. They're pretty cool. Big fan of all those guys, too. Same guys, I guess. Yeah, and we but, figured <laughs> like we figured that would be like the perfect lineup rather than yeah. anything else. Like, I mean, I feel like Bird Dog Jubilee and Big. Chunk what are they like, like? I don't know very much they're, about they're them. They're very they're they're a full on. I would call them a jam band. Really? You know okay. I mean? They they okay. They're, uh, they do they they do a lot of like. I mean, they're an Atlanta band. They've okay. done like post fish concerts, post oh, panic sick. concerts. Sick, sick, sick. They play a lot of like Aisle Five and like yeah. Steady Hand Brewing. Didn't they just do one at Aisle Five? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I about to say, I feel like I've mm-hmm. heard of them, like I'm aware of them, but I don't know anything about them. Yeah, there's some there's oh. some uh, bad motherfuckers, and you should listen to their music if you're hearing this. How do you spe- spell that? Bird, Bird dog. dog Jubilee. G U B J. Sorry, J U B I L E E. I'm about to check them out, man. I'm kind of stoked about this. I saw they play. Cool. I think they have. A They're new actually also well. playing 420 Fest this spring, so That's you know, exciting. be there before they blow up. <laughs> catch them, catch them yeah. quick. I love that, man. Well, shit, that's exciting, dude. I'd love to see you guys in 40 Watt. That'd be fun. Uh, it's such a fun place to play. You guys have never played there, right? That was the first We've time. We've kind of actually sort of avoided it. Really? To this point. Any reason for that? I want to feel like we earned it when we yeah. do, when we do step foot on that stage. Totally. It's a very trivial thing, and mm-hmm. the opportunity has arisen once before. And I was like, I don't want to do this because yeah. I don't think that we we've earned it. I don't think we've put in, you know, the time. I don't think we're tight enough as a band. I don't want to get up there. And yeah. I I, I kind of treat the forty watt with a lot of respect. We're Me um, as well. We're from. Right outside of Athens, always grew up coming to Athens. I, mm-hmm. In high school, I was a big punk guy, hardcore. Word. I grew up coming to the 40 watt. Yeah, you know, 
It carries some weight. Yes, oh, and yeah. I don't want it to, I don't I don't want our first appearance to be cavalier. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I, gotcha. I want it to be us on our A game when we're ready. Yeah. You know? Well, that's respectable, man. I, I won't say a lot of bands think like that. So that's, hold on to that. That's good. You know what I mean? And I think you're completely right because like it's uh. It's just one of those places where it's like, fuck, really? We're playing here? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like and the like, Kurt Cobain signature on the wall, yeah. and my little rinky-dink cover band is like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, something don't match up there. <laughs> yeah, man, I know exactly what you're saying. It, it but was, you can't be scared of the place just because of that's that. That's true. So it's like, when Would, the, I think if, if this uh, Bird Dog and Big Chungus show happens, which yeah. I'm pretty sure it is, um, I think that's a really great first step for us. I think know? so, too. And it'll look really great on you guys' track record and everything for, like, future gigs and stuff. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you guys building an EPK right now, kind of? Or, like, an electronic press kit? You know what I mean? I actually don't know, don't Ooh, know what that is. That might be I'm the next really step for you guys. Yeah, it's sounds a, like it. It's kind of like just, like, your track record. Like, it'll be a website uh, link, kind of, with, like, your list of covers, your list of shows you played, your like band band member breakdown, bio, some press picks, oh, and like okay. that's what you can kind of like send out to venues. Like if a you portfolio, go. exactly, and just... exactly. And that would be, be what you guys would kind of send out to like uh, I don't know if you want to go play in Clemson or Tuscaloosa or Atlanta. And yeah, I'd say start building one of those as soon as you can because that's like your like your resume kind of. You know what I mean? That Does that sense. make sense? Yeah. yeah. We kind of used our Instagram for that initially, yeah. but I think, I mean, at some point that does mm -hmm. get... Um, insufficient. Uh, yeah. Insufficient. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a, a less professional look than an actual EPK. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they're easy to make, man. There's like auto-generator websites. After this, I'll show you guys. But oh, I think that'd cool. be a great step for you guys if you're... I assume you have ambitions of playing outside of Athens at some oh, point, yeah, right? absolutely. I mean... Yeah. I think we're really, um, like right now, uh, I think at first I was really gung-ho about it. We played an out-of-town gig in Atlanta like pretty early on. And I was Smith's like, we just need to, no, we just played for um, some UGA grads. That okay. We played their old fraternity and then they were looking for a band and it just yeah, you know, worked out. Just, um, exactly. But um, yeah, I was pretty gung-ho about it, but then it turned out to be quite a lot of work to get all mm. of our gear and everybody up there because... Me and Nick and Owen all live in Athens. Colby yeah. lives in Buckhead. Garrett Ooh. lives in Madison. So they're both okay. an hour out in different directions. Yeah, that's tough. So we do have to kind of be pretty cognizant about like what we're doing. But I think, you know, we've gotten our feet under us a little bit. We're uh -huh. pretty confident about playing now, um, which is sort of a more recent thing, at least for me personally. Uh -huh. You know, it kind of took a while, but I'm starting to actually feel like. Oh, I am a musician. I play in <laughs> yeah. a band. Rather than just like, I don't know. It's, it, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. It, it felt like a hobby at first, and now it's like definitely still a hobby, but like it's something to take seriously. You know what I mean? Yeah. I there get what was you mean. definitely like that one night that we were just playing on fire and everything. And uh. we were, I feel like afterwards, we all like huddled up afterwards and. We just said, okay, I think we're a band now. Like, <laughs> like we, we truly... You crossed over. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah, interesting. Well, I'd say, um, I think it'd be good for you, if you could figure it out, which I'm sure you guys will, to play out of town as much as you can, honestly, because, like, well, I don't know, maybe, because you guys, the whole jam thing is playing a lot frequently, because you guys kind of have, like, the residency thing going on now. Mm -hmm. And, like, we play other places, so we don't, like, burn out Athens, per se, but you guys don't seem to be burning it out now, per se. Have you... Had any effects of that kind of like, oh, we just can't play to our same people again or like, oh, uh, we need a new, you know what I mean? No. Is, we have had a touch of that and that's where yeah. it come, came from. Like we, we had to just be like, like, look, Roadhouse, like we need a break from Roadhouse for a few weeks yeah. because we have to come back with like new material. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so we did have to like, um, you know, tell them that we needed a couple weeks off so that we could come back and. You know, thankfully, Christmas break is like kind of a built-in equivalent of that. We're gonna probably just spend our time grinding away over the next. You know, we we got a couple gigs before like Christmas break gets out. Um, Where are you playing at? Anywhere in particular? December second, I believe it's the last Thursday before the school year gets out. Uh -huh. Um, that 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 is our last Roadhouse gig for the year, nice. and then we're doing a uh, maybe the. 40 watt on December mm -hmm. 7th and Sick. then on December 3rd we're playing in Atlanta at a private party. So those Sick, will probably be man. like our last few things for the year. And other than that, I think we're just going to really try and grind away mm -hmm. sort of um not find a new direction to go in, but just kind of try and find a new well for covers okay. and um you know, just keep grinding away on the originals yeah. and just sort like of honing your craft kind mm -hmm. of. Exactly. exactly. Interesting, man. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear you guys got a few coming up. I'll be there on Did you say the 2nd at mm -hmm. Roadhouse? Yep. 
cool. That'll be the last week of school. I'm going to have to swing by for that because I haven't ex- ex- actually caught you guys yet. And I met one of your band members. God, I can't remember his name. Garrett, uh, I think. Is Garrett. Rabbit Hole? I think so, man. I meet a lot of people at Rabbit Hole. Yeah. I feel like it was him, though. And he said, I was like, oh, I've been following you guys for a while. He's, he's a nice kid. Nice kid. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys do. Maybe you guys should uh, start start throwing your weight out there at like, uh, Clemson, maybe. Clemson's a really close town that nobody really goes and plays. Yeah, yeah, Usher, only like yeah three, four hours actually away. suggested, um, I think it's called Loose Change. Yeah, it's Loose Change. I yeah, fucking they, they love suggest, They suggested we reach out to them. They were oh. like, you guys would probably do well there. I would love to put you guys in touch with Loose Change. I fucking love playing in there. It's my top three out of everywhere nice. we play. Because cause really? Clemson's one of those towns where like they don't have a ton of bands coming through. So when someone new comes through, they're like, oh, fuck yes, we don't get much of this. Like, I doubt there's any, like, super jammy bands like you guys there. I mean, that's probably not a fair guess, but, like, if you come into town and you're doing your own thing, they fucking go crazy, man. It's cool. a cool town. Oh, I feel like yeah. it's a slept-on college town, dude. There, We played there, like, literally, like, once a week for the whole tour almost. And it was, <laughs> I didn't get tired of it, man. Loose change goes hard. It's nice. definitely, like, a pretty place. I've been yeah. up there. I, bu- I went up there for, like senior year of high school yeah. or something just like visited up there just yeah. like randomly and it's a good looking town it, it's a beautiful town yeah, yeah. I and mean, it's not like athens where there's 80s bars there's like four bars you know what i'm saying so yeah, like the if there's a very con- if there's a band at like loose change streets, people go to loose change that's what you'll find yeah. out about states bro yeah it's the same way i was gonna play shenanigans bro how's shenanigans i heard it went out of business or something yeah they're gonna do a little bit of trouble selling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> Ooh, shit. yeah they uh shenanigans I have never seen a band in Shenanigans, yeah. but you never I, know. That's funny because we were booked there around the time when that was happening, and we were going to be like the first band back or whatever because they hadn't done any forever. And then that happened, and I was, I was like, I guess this isn't happening anymore. <laughs> they're like, yeah, Too probably hot not. Candle, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know it, man. But yeah, dude, oh, I'm excited about Statesboro just because people do get down there. We're playing. Um, Sigma Chi at Georgia Southern. Yeah, I don't know if you nice. guys have played there. Very, very nice guys so far. They've hooked us up with a spring show. But I, I feel like States... I'd love to put you in, t- in uh, touch, too, with my old fraternity. Theta I would love to. If you ever, if oh, you ever I'd love reach to. out, um, I feel like you, I'd, you'd I'd... probably kill there. Yeah, you think so? Mm-hmm. They, oh, I'd they, appreciate They love that. your brand of rock and roll. Yeah? Well, yeah. shit, let me write that down. Honestly, ask you about States Row would be a really great town for you because, yeah. like, just... All of like the music that you play. I mean, I've only seen one show of yours, but yeah. Where'd like, you see us at? The Forty Watt with Fun Room. Okay. And, uh, that was a fun show. I, I didn't realize Ace you guys were there. Opening. Yeah. That was a fun one. I enjoyed the yeah. shit out of that one. That, that was, was a, a really that was, good see show. that was like a heavy thing, like because yeah. Bradley, you know Bradley, of course. Mm-hmm. Bradley put in a good word for you to get you on here. Shout out Bradley Reeves. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bradley, man. that was one of those things where he had offered us to Forty Watt. It would have been my second time there. And I was like, all right, let's find a headliner. Let's let's find somebody that'll that'll lead this this cavalry, whatever. He's like, no, you guys. I was like, I, was like, I don't know, man. Yeah. I was like, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's like it's like whoa. I was like, hold on, oh, man. He's like, no, nah, man, you guys got it. You guys got it. I was like, all right, I trusted him, and and it ended up going really well, didn't it? Yeah, you guys it had was fun. A great oh, show. Yeah. Yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. I ended up I, got I, hammered on those cheap ass highlights <laughs> yeah. and the PBRs there. <laughs> yeah, it was a good lineup, and I remember thinking after that it was really heavy. You know, kind of mm-hmm. like you're saying, like you don't want to go in there and fuck it up. You don't want to go in forty watt and headline and sell 90 tickets and be like oh fuck we let everybody hey, here there, down yeah, was that was our crowd, big thing though. too yeah, like, i remember it's like 350 is what we did i think i'm pretty yeah. proud of that pretty proud. Shit, it was one of my man. favorite shows really? man and that was like also in the middle of the week too it was like a yeah. wednesday or something yeah. wasn't it? like thursday something like that like school not, hadn't even started back yet yeah, not on like an opportune time necessarily yeah. so yeah, man. you know you should definitely be proud of that thank you man i appreciate that I, you guys are gonna get in there and do the same thing i'm sure of it i'll be there i'm, I'm excited for you guys to see what you do with it We'll see what happens. Um, Give it the old college try. What else, have you guys ever? What I was gonna say about Statesboro is it kind of reminds me of Milledgeville and the fact that like they both should be music towns, kind of, but they're not. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there should be more of a scene, in my opinion, but I don't think there is really. Unfortunately, you know. They, I mean, they, there's maybe the same thing some, with Clemson, like you know, singers and stuff, you yeah. know, but and not a lot of like bands though. Yeah, you know, like. For whatever reason, like I mean, like obviously people like rock music, yeah. but it's just it, it gets way more like you know Statesboro is known for Luke Bryan and yeah. Cole Swindell, yeah, the and, country like, those scene, two guys, and you know there's mm-hmm. a million. This is not meant disrespectfully to the yeah. guys out there doing it right now, but there's a million of those get brand of pop country, country kind of guys, bro, yeah, yeah, you know, bro, country boyfriend thing. country as I call it, <laughs> snap, snap tracks and yeah, yeah baby. 
<laughs> beers. <laughs> I don't. I don't hate some of the stuff. I like some no, of the old Luke Bryan. And, hell, yeah, but, uh, Cole Swindell stuff. Yeah. That old stuff's good, man. Um, what was I gonna say about that? If, yeah, that's not many rock bands. I'm glad you guys are a rock band because like. We go to Tuscaloosa and we go to Clemson and people are like fucking losing their shit after the show. Like, man, we don't get rock bands through here ever. It's like all huh. country. Like ever. We've never seen a rock band here like you guys. I was like, really? Fucking Athens. We got plenty of them. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm glad that we're in a rock town if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard. It's there, There's no way in my mind, no conceivable future mm. where like Athens, Georgia does not have like a strong <laughs> rock scene. Yeah. I mean, it is like baked into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And country kind of gets murdered here. You know what I mean? Like there's not the bro country thing going on here really. Wouldn't you say? Like, I mean, there's a few guys like James not, Mason and like a few other guys like that. I don't okay. know if you know him. I'm not, I'm not aware of, yeah. of the uh, bro country scene here. Yeah, I don't, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, sure, weird. I'm sure there's some hipster out there that's going to be the next sure big, is. you know. Yeah, he's killing it right now. Yeah. Sure. We just don't know who he is. We just don't know who he is you know the next big outlaw alt country guy yeah. but <laughs> but i think it's so Wait, interesting we have, man we did have future birds that's a good future, point good future point birds, country pretty yeah. country-ish i'd put them in that camp they lean that way lean yeah. that way a little they bit have steel, they have pedal steel yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's all it takes right <laughs> that's so interesting to me though that like a town like statesboro could be so like bro country specialized pretty much like i don't know 85 percent of what's there oh, yeah yeah oh yeah and then you come to athens and it's like 85 percent rock bands it's like why you know what i'm saying like you know what i mean and they go to nashville or whatever and it's something different it's like how does that happen it's just like a culture thing i think that's fascinating i don't know I don't, why. I don't know what it is but yeah you're definitely right it is weird how it's sort of i mean it, it, it at least in athens you know it's like you know there's other stuff there. There's yeah. a thriving punk scene. You totally, know, there's totally. plenty of like rap yeah. and EDM. Indie rock and, kind yeah, of stuff. Tons of indie rock. Mm -hmm. Shout out Cannon in the Boxes. I love Cannon. <laughs> Cannon was the was the first guest we ever had on here. Cannon nice. in the Boxes, yeah. Love yeah. that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Springhouse was like the fifteenth guest and that was like a big episode because they're huge, you know, everybody's yeah. watching yeah. that shit. I think yeah. Jam is definitely like on the come up in general though. I think like so. a lot I think a lot of people are kind of getting tired of like the pop yeah. Ish music and jam is just so different. Yeah, like it's, nationally it's, it's speaking, jarring. I think the biggest up and coming rock bands right now are all jam bands. Think At so? least in terms of maybe you know, it. in terms of like selling tickets and filling mm -hmm. up rooms and stuff. Guys like Marcus King, there he's not in oh, the yeah. jam band or anything, but like he's obviously like on the come up, uh -huh. you know, and he kind of gets he's adjacent to the camp bands like Goose though. I mean, Goose oh, yeah. just Heard sold out two them. sold out nights at the Easter. That's like forty yeah. five hundred capacity. Woo! Two sold out Woo! nights. Of that. I mean that's crazy for a rock band. It's in crazy, 2021. man. That's a lot. You know? Yeah, and it's 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 like it's a, I hate to say trendy because it's not trendy, but like I never knew knew shit about jam bands until I came to Athens, and now it's like just what you hear everybody talk about, kind of. It's know? definitely like an insulated scene, but then you're shocked when you go to a festival or you go to your first Dead show yeah. and you realize, like the first time I saw Dead and Company, yeah. and I realized I thought I was just like, oh, I'm. 20 years old i'm yeah. like the only guy i know that likes this music yeah. oh wait i just pulled up to lakewood and there's 25,000 other people <laughs> exactly like me you the know what secrets I mean? like, out the yeah. secrets out it's like oh so it's not this small thing. it's not underground yeah. it's just its, it's own little corner of the world that's fascinating man i was actually reading about uh dead and co yesterday or i think it was dead and co uh, i don't know if you guys know anything about altamont the stone show where that people got killed or whatever yeah mm. we actually i have a i have a, I have a poster from, is it from that. is it Mick Jagger wearing the hat? Yeah, I, yeah, I've seen that poster. I oh, think. it's like one of the cheap ones you get at like Target. Yeah. And stuff. That's sick, Mass dude. Printed, but <laughs> I was reading in a book. I was in fucking Barnes and Noble stealing the knowledge yesterday, and uh, fucking it was saying that Dead and Co was supposed to open that day, and that it was so sketchy that they pulled out last minute. I was like, well, fuck, wow. smart, Which is smart like pretty, guys. Pretty wild because you know that a lot of that I think the incidents came from like the Stones got the Hell's Angels yeah, to do Angels, security. Yeah. Uh, well, like the dead and the Hales Angels were like this, you know, the yeah, whole time. They it got, was their they just, idea. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they were like, oh, yeah, they brought, they brought Jeffrey. I don't know. That guy's pretty scary. I'm like, out of here. That's hilarious. That's literally what I was reading is that it was the Dead & Co.'s manager's idea to bring the Hells Angels out. And then the Stones got all the bad press for it because they headlined or whatever. But yeah. that's hilarious, man. I don't know. Fucking, I don't know why I'm reading shit about that. <laughs> shit happened fucking 50 years ago. Yeah, but anyways, cool. we're an hour and five in. This is usually when I try to wrap it up. So you guys give me give me like a quick brief little aspirations where do you guys want to be next year where do you guys want to be in the coming months like a quick little recap of just like where you want to be if you know what i mean i know it's a big question 
I think in the next six months, I think we'll have an EP out of all sick. original music. Uh-huh. I think hopefully we might have something live out that we'll do with our friend Ben Myers, mm-hmm. who, by the way, if anybody out there needs a sound guy, he's available. Holler he's at him. Um, and hopefully we'll just be playing a hell of a lot of shows. Hopefully we'll be breaking uh-huh. out of Athens a little yeah. bit, you know, breaking into Atlanta, maybe playing some ticketed events at Smith's yeah. or 41. Yeah. Or, you never know. You know what I mean? I think hopefully next year... I think the big goal, at least for me personally, would be a theater show. Not headlining necessarily, but just... That'd be nice, You know what it? I mean? I think yeah. that, that would be the... Our first goal was just get paid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The next goal is, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it, we have to reevaluate down the line. But I think I think a reasonable, like, big goal for us for the next year is open up for, for somebody at the theater. You know yeah, I mean? Springhouse or something, got, you know? You know Shit, I'm I mean, not we've... asking for it, but you know, we're, we're your friends, guys. If you hear this, <laughs> look us up. <laughs> we did play that Springhouse after party. Yeah, we did. We did the, the after party for their Georgia Theater Show. Their most recent this year. Paloma uh, Park. Or? No, we played at Roadhouse. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I remember um, hearing a little bit about that. Max saw us one night and was like, "Dude, are you guys doing anything next week?" And we're yeah. like, "Nah." And he was like, "You guys should do an after party for us." And I was like, "Hell yeah!" If it chalked Fuck it yeah. up to just hammered talk. And next yeah. week I get a text from Mitch and he's like, "So you guys gonna do that?" And I was like, Fine, "I let me guess text so." Jasmine, let me get the let's let's get the crew together. Like, yeah. Max it, is one of the most spacey, cool guys I've ever met, dude. He's just like total space. Cadet, yeah, but goddamn, totally. I love that guy. Yeah, me too. I tra- <laughs> I- <laughs> I tried to post the shit out. It was back in the day before he was in Springhouse. We just knew each other through class. I was like, I like, hey, Max, come jam with us sometime, man. Come play with us. You want to be in the band? But he, we weren't in the same kind of music stuff. But, yeah, I love that guy. Anyways, dude, I think theater is definitely in the cards for you guys. 40 Watts happening. I'm excited, or hopefully. And you guys just keep doing what you're doing. You're going to be fine. I'm excited. I heard a lot about you guys. I see you murdering it. I see you building a fan base. I, I like what you're doing. I'm excited for you all. Oh, Thanks, I appreciate man. that. I yeah, thank you for having us having on, James. Yeah, Anytime, sure. man. Let's go ahead and tell the people where to find your info at. Tell them your Instagram handle. All that's good stuff. Follow us at the regulars underscore ATH. Nice. There is not a the. It's just regulars underscore ATH. Nice. Um, nice correction there. Yeah. Got to tighten up, man. Follow us on there. <laughs> um, that's the only social media we have yeah. right now, but it's got everything you need. That's all you need, man. Has Come out videos. and see us at Roadhouse. Get you a free sticker. What's the date on those Roadhouse shows? December 2nd at Roadhouse. It's uh-huh. Thursday. And then December 7th at the 40 Watt. Opening Beautiful. up for Big Chungus, the Mighty Chungus, the Mighty and Bird Chung. Dog Jubilee. Maybe. We're, hope, we're hoping on that one. Wink, wink. <laughs> That's we're awesome, gonna you guys. We're all going to go bully Bradley later to book yeah. the books. Yeah. <laughs> we're beating Bradley up behind the 40 yeah. Watt at his own establishment. Yes. Anyways, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for listening in. If you made it an hour and seven minutes in, I'm very proud of that. These guys are super interesting. I'm stoked about this. Go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on YouTube at Jameson Tank. Um, subscribe on Instagram at Jameson underscore OTR. And yeah, follow these guys and just, just keep hammering at them. Give them a wave so I have a thumbnail, Ooh. right? Yes. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank Peace. Thank you. Man.